What's up, Truth and Love? Welcome back to another segment of Let's Talk About It. We are about to close out the month of October. We coming into November with all the joy and the favor of the Lord. I'm Secret, and I'm here with Miss Lass. How y'all doing today? So first, let's jump into the worship. I feel like it was beautiful. My favorite song was the Forever is a Long Time. Oh, that's a good one. That's How Long I Love You song. That's a good one. That's how did you feel? That's real good. I, I, I spoke to uh, Jarena a couple of weeks ago maybe a couple of days ago and I was saying you know I was reading and Hallel the actual meaning of Hallel Hebrew meaning means to make a show to to show basically to lose your mind and worship and I looked at her and I said you're taking us there so she's taking us to the place where we need to be in worship where it's not about what's going on it's not where we are it's we're losing ourselves in the presence of the Lord and that is just so good to me and they and she bring they bring it a blaze brings it they've been bringing it every Sunday I'm so excited about it I loved it today absolutely every song I loved every song every song and shout out to the minstrels, because y'all be playing that thing down. Y'all be playing for filth, and I really like that. Um, so let's jump into Pastor's message today. We are in part 9,000 of the Conquest series, Conquering Canaan, Joshua 14, 12. So he opened up by talking to us about things that the promised land represents, because that's where we are right now. We're talking about Canaan. That's the promised land. It represents release, and it represents rest, and it represents a present reality. Yes. So springboarding off of that term of present reality, he spoke about we have that in-between time between what the Lord is doing and what he has done. So my question to you is, how do we wait effectively between I know the Lord's doing something and he's done it? I, I think it's, it's like he's, he mentioned to us today to remember that whatever mm -hmm. we're going through, to remember what God brought us through. Uh, there was a point in time in my life where things were really, really rough, and really, really bad. I was at a low point. But it, what got me through that was knowing the goodness of God mm -hmm. and knowing that because I've been through something previously, he'll bring me out of this because he's right. not a God that he should lie. He's not a man that he should lie. And if God said it, he's going to do it. And because he's said it before and he don't change mm -hmm. that's what I held to that he's going to do it again and another thing that I did was to to in order to 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 narrow that time or the anxiety mm -hmm. between when you're in it and when you're out of it yeah. is I picture myself out of it yeah. And because I can picture myself out of it that that place where he's taking me then mm -hmm. I can get excited about where I'm going and not let where I am keep me down so wow, that's really good. That's really going. good. Focus on where you want to be, basically. Sounds like you're saying. My Canaan. I had to focus on my Canaan. And I think he, too, said that he could taste it. He could taste <laughs> what the Lord's going to do. And I tell people, I was like, oh, I taste the Lord's good. And they look at me crazy. Like, you taste? I'm like, I really taste that the Lord is about to do something. Have you ever had that moment where you're like, hmm, I I taste a little something in the atmosphere. Yeah. Ever yeah. happened to you? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like it's coming. You like, you like wake up and you like. You know, where, where, I, I feel it. It's up. What? Where? Yeah, it's there. It's there. It's there. It's there. <laughs> it's an exciting time when you can do that. It's there. It's there. I'm excited about my Canaan. I'm excited about my Canaan. Yes. <laughs> we got great expectancy. I hope y'all do too. So moving on to his next point about conquering, ceasing despite comfort. And so the Israelites, they were given specific instruction. Y'all need to drive out Geshur and Makkah, the people of Geshur and Makkah, but they did not do that. So can you speak to the importance of ridding ourselves of things that are not in alignment with where God is taking us? Oh, absolutely. And, and this was, of all the points, I think this one and the very last point that mm -hmm. he made, these were my favorites because it reminded me and, and, and it was a teachable moment for me to, mm -hmm. to when you get past that point of, of where it's okay and you're not really stressed about it anymore, don't stop. Don't stop till it's done. If you're praying for someone to be delivered or you're praying for someone um, to overcome, uh, praying for someone to get to that, that place where they need to be, and you see them, like say, for example, if you're praying for someone to develop a prayer life, you know, and mm -hmm. they start praying all of a sudden. 
Mm-hmm. At that point, I might say, oh, well, they're praying now. I can stop. But I can't stop until they're in, in where they need to be. You right. know, just because I see a little bit of success, I can't stop. So that was a teachable moment for me today that I need to keep going until God says stop. Until he says, when he says mm-hmm. drive them out, I got to keep going until it's completely done. So that was a that was a, a point for me today to take a takeaway from me. I got to keep going regardless of what comes, regardless of how it's looking. I got to keep going until it's done. I can't quit. I can't stop stopping. Because <laughs> we know limit soldiers. <laughs> we don't stop. <laughs> but I love the way you set that up because that, that worked out perfectly. Um, so there's the scripture in the Bible. I know you know it. Elijah was about to do his last prophecy and he was talking to the king and the king was getting scared because he's like I see the chariots and I see them coming and so he gave him instruction he said open the eastern window shoot the arrow that's the Lord's arrow of victory and then he also said to strike the ground with the arrows so the king he only struck the ground those three times and then he got angry Elijah did and he said why did you stop you should have struck it five or six times and then you would have completely destroyed the the Armenians I'm saying it wrong y'all don't quote me something like that and uh he didn't know but he did have a victory but he didn't have as much victory as he would have had if he would have continued striking the ground why do we stop prematurely we get comfortable it's kind of like what he mentioned we we got comfortable you know it takes a lot let's just be honest it takes a lot to pray as people say pray somebody through Mm-hmm. It takes a lot to, to pray yourself to victory. It takes a lot to, to seek the face of God regardless, mm-hmm. 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. It takes a lot when it God does. calls you. He wants to talk to you at 2 o'clock in the morning, 5 mornings straight. That takes a lot. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we, we are in our, we're human. We're, we're in our flesh, and that's why I thank God so much for grace because, you know, I, get t- I don't want to get up and talk. I know I'm talking to God, but I don't, I'm, I'm tired. I'm sleepy. Mm-hmm. So I think sometimes it's because of the fatigue in our body mm-hmm. that we decide we want to give up I, or we want to quit or we want to stop or we want to let me just take a break, you know. Um, but God said, don't don't stop. If he's mm-hmm. calling you, if he's telling you, if he's calling you at two o'clock in the morning, he want the most high God that made heaven and earth and everything in it wants to talk to me at two o'clock in the morning, baby. Yes, Lord. I'm up. <laughs> day five, day seven, day eight, day 55, day 67, you know, uh, uh, series 9,000. Yes, Lord. <laughs> what do you yeah. want to say to me, Lord? I'm here. What did Samuel say? He, he said, uh, he was like, uh, what did the prophet tell Samuel? Go say, yes, Lord, I'm here. Your servant is here. So, yes, Lord. Is it easy? No, Lord. <laughs> Definitely not. Amen. Amen. That was good. And one of his other points was to conquer clamping despite chaos. That's a little skip my tongue caught up there. <laughs> um, I would love to dig into that one, y'all, but we we got to slide on to the payday. next Just want to say payday, payday. The payday. candy bar? Pay, no, not payday. Co- bar? Not okay. Payday, payday. That's, that's, when, that's what payday. Conquering, clamping down on despite the chaos, payday. Payday. I went old school, Tim. My mind went back to payday coming after a while. Woo, put your time in. I'm putting my time in. You, y'all millennials don't know nothing about that one either. Oh, I know that. Google cool. it. <laughs> <laughs> payday. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, and so we need to conquer our circumstances despite the clock. And when I thought about that, I thought about the shot clock because I know about basketball. I don't know about football. Um, and so you have that window of time where you got to make a move. You got to bust your move. You got to hit that net within that shot clock time. So who has taught us to put God on a clock? We have because we're on a time. We, we want God to do it yesterday. Yeah. day before yeah. and we put God on a clock because of our impatience because of yeah. our an- anxiousness yeah but God the creator of everything knows everything that needs to be in place and everything that needs to happen in order for us to do what we need to do right right so you know we got to learn to wait and we we put a time clock on because we're time conscious people we work 40 hours a week we have to be there by a certain time we have to leave by a certain time we start church at a certain time we have to be on time you know we have to be timely and everything so it kind of filters over into our relationship with the lord and we want to tell him okay lord by this time next year yeah i want that i yeah. want that yeah. and we but we can do that Mm -hmm. but it's but we still got to remember not my will but your will i mean hey jesus did the same thing we following jesus he was in the garden of gethsemane he said you know if this cup could pass 
Mm-hmm. That was him saying, Lord, no, no, I don't want to do that. No. Mm-mm. But but he said, what did he say? Not my will, but, but your thy will. will be done. And that's mm-hmm. what we got to remember. Yes, we as as humans, every, we're time conscious. And I looked at it this way as, as I'm getting older, that maybe I don't have the patience or maybe I don't have the stamina. Maybe I don't have the wherewithal to do like I used to do. You know, I have two younger kids, and I'm telling you, raising them and raising the older ones is two different things. Mm-hmm. I just really don't always have the patience, the time, the energy to do with them like I did with the older ones, but I can't shortchange them. I, I still have to parent them, just like with God. I Just because I'm older now, I can't say, Lord, I'm too old to do this. Kayla was 85. Mm-hmm. He was old. Oh man! But the Lord gave him stamina, gave him strength, mm-hmm. and he said, and 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 it wasn't like the, the scripture said the Lord, you know, gave. He said we can do it. So he knew the potential was there. Mm-hmm. He knew God had it. So he just went and said, "Okay, Lord, I'm well able. Just as much as I was 40 years ago, I am now." And that mm-hmm. is something to say when you've got that kind of faith and what God's gonna do 40 years later. Woo! Yes, Lord, <laughs> I'm well able. <laughs> Amen. to conquer the circumstances despite the clock i'm well able <laughs> amen amen and going to our last point here before we close out conquering consistency despite my company and i just want to say that something that i've really learned in my intimate walk with god is that i can't sacrifice my calling for company i can't sacrifice the precepts and the concepts that the lord has put in me just to keep those people. Um, So how can we still follow the Lord and still love people, but not lay down our calling and instructions for our company? Um, Being wholly committed to God. You know, as as he mentioned in in the message today, Mm -hmm. when we are wholly committed, we're going to close the gap. So sometimes... no, nowhere does it say we're going to be popular. Jesus wasn't, you know, he had his moments of popularity based on what he was mm, giving. Yeah. And that's kind of the same things with us. If we're giving, if we're giving, if we're giving, if we're giving, if, you know, then, then we have a lot of people around us. But when we get to the point to say, no, I'm not available right now. I got to spend some time Ooh, with the Lord. they be mad. No, I'm not available to do this. Or just saying no, period. Big man. You know, you know, people get upset, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. We're closing the gap. I still love you. I still mm-hmm. care for you. But I've got to go spend this time with the Lord. I've got to wholly. That means everything within me, every fiber of my being has to wholly seek God. That means I can't seek God um, with my mouth and my heart is after somebody else. I can't seek God with my arms and my feet is going in a different direction. That doesn't work wholly from head to toe. Very fiber of my being, all of my DNA has to wholly seek God. And that means sometimes you're going to have to give up some things. Yes. But it's, it's well worth it because of the relationship it develops with you and the Lord. Yes. Was there anything else you wanted to share with the people before we close? I'm ready for my mountain. (laughs) I'm ready for my Canaan. I'm ready for my mountain. Amen. (laughs) Amen. So truth and love, 2 Corinthians 1.20 said, for all the promises of God, find their yes in him. So I hope that you would take possession of the land that the Lord has promised you. I hope that you would keep your zeal. I hope that you would keep your faith and your motivation, knowing that if God said it, that's what it shall be. I don't care who says no, who says this, who says that, but the Lord said yes. And every word that he has sent out and he has declared, it shall be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. So if you believe that, hit us up in the comments and tell us that the yes will be found in the Lord and that you are possessing your Canaan. Thanks for rocking with us on another segment of Let's Talk About It. See you next time.